Christ is risen. Christ is risen. Christ All right, we got to try it again. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Welcome to this, the Lord's house. On this, the Lord's day, let us rejoice and be glad in it. It is always wonderful when we can worship together and start our week right here at Crossgate United Methodist Church. But what a gift that we can all gather here today on Easter Day and celebrate our risen Lord and Savior. So whether it's your first time here or the latest of many, welcome. Let us worship the Lord. I want to give a thanks to everybody who participated this week to make Holy Week so poignant and so breathtaking. It was just something. The, the choir, the ensemble... The actors, the readers, just everybody. It has been a, just a most special Holy Week. And uh, today we are still worshiping. And I want to thank you, everybody who has put a lily in the church too, in honor or in memory of your loved ones, so that it looks especially special today as we celebrate our risen Lord and Savior. Next week, I just want to put one plug in. You can read all the announcements in your bulletin. But next week, I want to put a plug in. Y'all, we have 11 young people who are dedicating their life. They are professing their faith next Sunday. And I sure hope that all of you will come back and watch as we worship together on that important day, too. I just want to give you a heads up for that. But for now, let us pray. Oh, God, who gives us all new life, as we breathe in the joy of your Easter morning, we do shout hallelujah. And we give you all the thanks and praise that you conquered our death and sin through the life, death, and resurrection of your son, Jesus Christ. And we just give you all the thanks and praise that through this Lenten season, we have died to self and we have been raised to new life. And we can feel your love beating in our hearts. So God, we give you thanks for pouring out your grace, for pouring out your healing, for pouring out your love on earth. And we pray all of this in the strong and holy name of our risen Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen.
together in our affirmation of faith, our Apostles' Creed that is on the screen. Join with me. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Scripture reading this morning is Jeremiah 31, verses 1 through 3, and then 31 through 34. At that time, says the Lord, I will be the God of all the families of Israel, and they shall be my people. Thus says the Lord, the people who survived the sword found grace in the wilderness when Israel sought for rest. The Lord appeared to him from far away. I have loved you with an everlasting love. Therefore, I have continued my faithfulness to you. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant that I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, a covenant that they broke, though I was their husband, says the Lord. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another, or say to each other, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me. From the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord, for I will forgive their iniquity, and remember their sin no more. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
for Christ our Lord is risen. We come in awe and with yeas at the amazement of what this day brings to rejoice that the stone is rolled away, to find an empty tomb, to see the wounds of the risen Christ in front of us for our Savior lives. Lord, we thank you for the chance of new life, of making fresh starts, maybe even starting over. For with Easter comes newness, it comes life and joy, light from the dark, a bare altar to one adorned with lilies, from somber song to music that puts a smile on our faces. For all of this, O oh Lord, we give you thanks. We are so thankful for your presence in our lives with your comfort and your love and ask that you continue to surround the individuals and families that we lift up to you this morning. For Regina Dido, Homer Nelson, Dorothy Taylor and Dale McMurray. We lift up Siggy Morgan and Shirley O'Brien, Danny Clymer, Johnny Sims and Joni. And we lift up all of those who have been honored and remembered this Easter through the symbol of love and other individuals and concerns that we keep close to our hearts, those in our community and around our world who continue to grieve, those affected by violence and all who hurt this day. O oh Lord, we ask that you lay your hands on their wounds, giving them the comfort that they need in all of their struggles. Almighty God, you are our strength and our guide through the ups and the downs of life. Continue to help us extend that love and guidance to those we meet on the journey. Christ has risen indeed, and for that we pray the prayer that you taught all of us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. At this time, we invite all of the children to come up for our children's moment with Miss Sherry. Here with you. Good morning. Come on down. Wow. You do need to sit where you can see this yellow piece of paper that I have in my hand. Can you see? where you're sitting, because you're going to want to see it. Okay, Rivers, I'm going to set this right back. Well, you all look so handsome and so beautiful today, almost like it's a celebration. Is today a celebration? It is. How many of you have already had a... I've already had a visit from the Easter Bunny today. A few people, yeah, a few people from the Easter Bunny. You got to take a picture with the Easter Bunny. That's awesome. Well, you know, the reason we do all of this stuff with Easter is because it has to do with the fact that we are Easter people. Have you ever heard anybody say that before? We as Christians are Easter people, but for a long, 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 can you say long with me? Long time. People have been trying to find other ways to get to God. Now, where does God live? In heaven. In heaven, that's right. So if we go all the way back to the Old Testament, there were these people who built this tower, and they were trying to reach with their tower all the way to heaven, but they didn't make it. And this piece of paper that I have right here 
You know, we have lots of modern technology and lots of things that we can use to make our lives easier and show the progress that we as human beings have made. What have I got? I've got an airplane. Do you think that we could fly this airplane all the way to heaven? No? Yes, I've got one taker over here. I think we could get way up in the sky, but I don't know that we could get all the way to heaven. And then human beings have gone even farther in trying to get to the heavens, and they have managed to make a rocket ship. Oh, cool. Rocket ship. Now, I have a question for you. Do you think we could take this rocket ship and get even higher than we could get in the plane? Yes, we can get higher. In the, can we get all the way to heaven? No. We have mixed responses, but I think the answer is no. It would go to outer space. We still need to go just a little bit farther, but here's the bottom line, and this is why we are Easter people. Here we go. The reason we are Easter people is because there's only one way to get to heaven. <gasps> what is it? And the dying has already been done for us, Jackson. The reason we dressed up today, the reason we celebrate today, the reason we say that we're here for a celebration and why we're Easter people is because Jesus died on the cross for us. We don't have to have the fancy airplane. We don't have to have a fancy rocket. We don't have to build a tower because the work's already been done for us. And all we have to do is believe in what's been done for us. Amen. Let's pray. Dear God, we thank you for the fact that you've given us the chance to be your Easter people. Amen.
like that. Bravo, bravo. <laughs> to the handbells and the choir and to everyone for making this such a happy Easter day. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Hallelujah. I was just going to see if y'all would do it again <laughs> in the middle of the service. Because for 40 days, we have moved through the very center of our faith and worship. The story of God's love for us that's brought into focus during holy work, during the passion and death and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. And we have had our Lenten journey guided by the fact that God knows our hearts better than anyone, even better than we know ourselves, and God still loves us. And isn't it wonderful that more than anything, God wants to be in our lives and in our hearts, no matter what our lives look like. No matter what our hearts look like, God wants us to return to him with our whole lives, with our whole hearts, so that we can live lives worthy of the name that we have been given in Jesus Christ, a name that we all claim if we are all here celebrating Easter this morning. So I want you to do something this morning. Put your hand over your heart. Do you feel it beating? Does it feel like an Easter heart beating in your chest? You see, each week we have looked at all that it takes to keep our hearts beating with the lifeblood of Jesus. And the first thing that we learned that to have an Easter heart, it has to be God-centered instead of self-centered. And when we know who God is, like John read from Jeremiah, that God has loved us with an everlasting love. And that thanks to the power of the resurrection, there is nothing Nothing, neither death nor life, nor angels nor demons, neither our fears for today or our worries tomorrow, not principalities, not even the powers of hell can separate us from God's love. And that is worth saying hallelujah. And when we know that God is slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love, it makes it easier to acknowledge that, you know what, we are all sinners who fall short of the glory of God. And we understand that to have an Easter heart our hearts have to be repentant. But when we know God, when we know how much God loves us, it makes it a whole lot easier to fall on our knees and to confess our sins and to ask for God for help to turn away from the things that hurt us and the things that harm us and let God's grace and mercy flow over us, creating in us a clean heart. And so to not let our hearts be changed by the grace and mercy of Jesus Christ is to take God for granted It's to cheapen all that Jesus did for us on the cross at Calvary. And every encounter we have with Jesus results in a changed heart. We have been forgiven and blessed thanks to the generous grace and the love of Jesus Christ. And just as God is generous with us, that's what we're called to be with others. What we have received from God is what other people need. We must have a generous heart. We can't stockpile all this grace and love and mercy and keep it for ourselves. Because when we do, it ruins. We have to believe it. If we believe it enough to receive it for ourselves, then we have to live it. And we live it by sharing it with others. Because there is a whole world of people out there who need God's grace and God's mercy and God's hope and God's peace and God's healing and God's strength and God's joy too. And God is counting on us to share what we have received so that we can turn this world back into the kingdom of God. Now, Jeremiah told us that God will write his covenant upon our hearts, and he will be our God, and we will be his people, and he will remember our sin no more. Wow. I still remember my sin, but God doesn't remember it anymore. And we talked about what God wrote on our hearts. God wrote on our hearts, I know you. I have called you by name, and you are mine. You are precious in my heart. You are precious in my sight, honored, and I love you. And when you know, and not just know, but when you actually believe what God thinks about you and has done for you, I don't think that you can help but have a thankful heart. God was willing to do anything and tried everything and finally did everything through Jesus on Calvary, conquered our sin and even death itself just so that we could have new life just so that we could have a new start, just so that we could have an Easter heart. And when you get that, I think it changes your perspective. 
It changes the way you see things. It changes the way you see people. It changes how you see life itself. It changes how you see your own self as being beloved and made in God's image. And, ha and it changes how you make choices, choices that honor God and honor yourself and honor the people in your life. Now, we also talked about the fact that we are all human. We are all humans, and other people are what make life better for us, and other people are also who what, who, are who what makes life, I can't say that right. Other people are also who make life worse for us. But we also have a role in making life better or worse for other people. So it's important to have a truthful heart. As people of faith, it is important to have a truthful heart because our words matter. And we must learn to speak the truth in love and not just say, bless your heart. We have to be about building each other up and not tearing each other down. You know, if you read that story over there, if you read God's love story for all of us that runs all the way through the Bible, you never see God saying to any of those people in the Bible they weren't good enough or they were too sinful or they had killed too many people or they needed to straighten out a few things before God was going to save them. God just spoke to them and loved them. And God's transformational love changed their old life into a new one. You see, because we're all children of God, and somehow in this great, big, beautiful body of Christ, we are all just as good as the rest of the people here. But you know what? None of us are any better than the people here. And that's something that should help us stay humble, stay humble and stay obedient. <clears throat> Which is why we have to have an obedient heart. We have to be willing to obey. You know, God sets these rules in our lives not to punish us, but to give us some boundaries so that we can play, so that we can live in the boundaries within them. <clears throat> because when we get outside of them, that's when we get hurt, or that's when we hurt other people. And so we have to be willing to obey even when what God wants is not necessarily what we want. We have to trust that what God wants is best for us. And God is going to do all that he can to make it happen. But the deal is we're responsible too. We have a part to do in all of this as well. And God needs us to keep telling the good news of Jesus Christ by the ways we live and love each other. You see, we're the ways that Jesus has made real to people who never wander into a church. And you know what the other people do? They change us. They transform us into the body of Christ. You see, Jesus was perfect, but his life wasn't perfect. And if you think back to Holy Week, we talked about Jesus praying in the Garden of Gethsemane in our window over here. And, we, and Jesus prayed for God to let that cup pass from him. And then Jesus prayed, but not my will, but yours be done. And God didn't take that cup from him. But what did God do? God sent an angel to strengthen him for what lay ahead, and Jesus was obedient, even unto death on a cross. And so I want to acknowledge that some of us come here today not quite ready for Easter. Like Jesus, our lives aren't perfect. We live in a broken world where people hurt, and we all struggle with painful events in our own lives. And Jesus knows. Jesus knows that because he entered into the messiness of human life. He knows and he offers to meet us right where we are and offers healing and mercy and forgiveness and hope and peace and strength to last until that day when you are ready to celebrate Easter. Until that day where there is restoration. You see, Jesus will never forsake us that is something powerful to claim. Jesus will never forsake us. You never have to go through anything alone. You always have Jesus with you. And you have us, a beloved community, to lean on and to pray with you through these tough and tender days. And God may not answer our prayers the way we want to, but God will give us strength for what lies ahead. And God will bring a beginning from, end, from every end. And God will give you strength until that day of new life comes because that's just the way God is. That's just the way God works. 
And that's what God did through the power of the cross and the empty tomb. God brought forth new life from what was dead. And that's the new life that we're offered today. And there is no need to wait until we are perfect because you know that ain't going to happen, right? Unlike Jesus, we're not perfect people, but God doesn't ask us to be perfect. God calls us to be faithful. We all sin and fall short of the glory of God, and yet somehow we are all beloved, and we are somehow all acceptable in his sight. And when we understand what God did, that God will do anything and did do everything for us in Jesus Christ, and with Christ, all things are possible, right? Because it was Jesus who conquered every sin, every shortcoming, even death itself conquered everything just to give us a second chance just to have new life in him and when you get it when you truly get it your life keeps changing and your heart keeps changing into an Easter heart so put your hand over your chest again do you feel it beating with the lifeblood of Jesus let the power of Jesus' love change your heart into an Easter heart. Hear God call you by name and open your heart to the possibility of receiving more peace and more healing and more strength and more joy and more mercy and more justice and more compassion and more love, more of what really matters in life. Let God write his covenant upon your heart and believe so that you can be transformed by what God offers you this day and every day. A new beginning, a new heart, a new life, and a new you for the whole world to behold. Would you please stand in body or spirit out of reverence and joy for the good news of Jesus Christ today? As we hear the Easter story from John 20, verses 1 through 8. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark. Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciples set out, and they ran towards the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter, and he reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. And then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple, who reached the term first, also went in. He saw and believed. This is the word of God for the Easter people of God. 